Tesla did like that it was a very simple roof line. You know, the, the more complex and ridges and different angles gets more complicated for solar tiles. Today, we're in the mountains of northern Georgia. Not the likeliest place you'd expect to find Tesla solar roof tiles. But if you've seen our videos with Eric Miller, you'll know his passion for solar energy and EVs. And one thing I didn't realize is not every single one of those is a solar panel. Eric and his family own Yona Mountain Vineyards a few hours north of Atlanta. About 10 years ago, he became one of the first in the world to own a Model S, and immediately after, his interest carried into his business. In around 2014, I said, why don't we put some electric car charging stations in here? It'll bring the Tesla owners up here. We could be put on a map. In that time, he added 14 high-powered Tesla and EV charging stations, a massive 106 kilowatt solar farm, and about 12 months ago, his vineyard became the first in the state to add Tesla's latest solar roof tiles, a 17 kilowatt system. Eric began the process in August 2020, and working with Tesla, the solar tiles were installed over a two-week period in July 2021. So the solar company and the roofers had to do it in coordination. Tesla actually sent one main guy from California to be the project manager, because he had installed them in California, and they flew him out here, and he was here for the two weeks. And they all kind of fit together like Legos, which I thought was fascinating. They put down these rails at the beginning, and then each one of them is about a two foot by four foot Lego piece. And they just, they just click right in and they plug them up and then they put the next one in and they just, and they literally just push it in. It sounds like Legos, they click in and they all go in series all the way like this, all the way around. And then the big question for this is how much did this cost? So we got it before the huge price hike. And it was like within weeks of the price hike. Right after that, they almost doubled in cost. Because once I saw how cool they look, I was like, we should just put them everywhere here. Like, look at all this roof space we have. We just put more solar tiles on there. And then they doubled in cost. We're like, never mind. We'll wait. It's fine. The total project was, and including four power walls, was 100,000. The 17 kilowatt solar tiles cost around $60,000 while the four power walls added another 40 grand after install. The same project today would cost Eric over $150,000. All this setup was from the pavilion. So here are the wires coming in from the pavilion and they come in and here's the two pavilion inverters. In its first year of operation, the tiles are generating about $2,600 of electricity per year or $215 a month. The break-even point for a solar tile investment is 22 years. Back in July 2019, Tesla announced a goal to install 1,000 solar roof tiles per week by year's end. But between a pandemic, a war, and supply shortages, the latest numbers from earlier this year show Tesla was completing about 23 solar roof installs per week in the only country that they install them in, the US. None of them had done it before, right? The roofers were like, okay, we're, this should be how it works. And once they had the Tesla engineer fly out, like he was like, nope, nope, fix this. And he was a pro, like he came in and knew everything and every problem and every issue. And everybody else was like, what, what are we doing here? What is this stuff? And like, so they all learned on the fly while they were putting it up on here. Just last month, Tesla paused solar roof installs in virtually all markets, likely because of low supplies of tiles. At the same time, they moved their team to focus on solar panels, which just had its best month of panel installations ever. They said one other person at the time that we installed had it in Georgia. And I have not heard since if other people got them in Georgia. On its website, Tesla is currently accepting solar roof orders, though installation times vary between a few months to over a year, depending on where you live. Now, when people come up here, do they even notice? Or does it just, because it blends in so well. If, I, if we don't point it out, people don't know. That's the funny thing. People who care about it, they ask about it, and then they're all enamored. There's also some unique quirks and features to Tesla's solar glass roof. They sit about an inch above the roof decking and underlayment allowing for vents at the base and ridge line. So unlike a composite or ceramic roof, it allows for airflow beneath the tiles, keeping it cooler than you'd expect. In the same space, you'll also find where Tesla routes the cables from the tiles to the inverters. 
Big thanks to Birch Living for sponsoring this video. So sleep is a big deal in our household with three small kids. So a while back, we made the choice to find the best mattress that's not only good for our family, but also good for the planet. Birch is a premium mattress in a box company that makes stylish and seriously the most comfortable mattresses and sleep products. And they happen to be environmentally friendly. We recently transitioned our youngest, Lakin, out of her crib into a real bed, and I immediately knew I wanted to go with Birch again because their mattresses are made with organic and natural natural materials that are always sustainably sourced and is made right here in the US. I've personally had my Birch mattress for a few months now and love everything about it. It's noticeably more comfortable than our previous brand name mattress and I love that it's 100% non-toxic. If you're nervous about buying something that you haven't tried first, it's really not a big deal because Birch gives you more than three months to make sure you love it. And if you don't, they'll just pick it up for you and you get a full refund. Plus, it comes with a 25-year warranty. The best part is that Birch delivers your mattress right to your door for free in the US. It comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy to set up yourself. I love my Birch mattress and I think you would too. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch. You can click the link below or go to birchliving.com slash kimjava for $400 off a mattress plus two free pillows. All right, let's get back to it. So when it comes to durability, Tesla solar tiles outperform traditional roof tiles pretty much in every metric. So they have a hail rating of an inch and three quarters and a wind rating of up to 166 miles per hour. And these are both the highest in the industry. In fact, in its warranty documents, Tesla guarantees that the solar roof will prevent damage from wind and rain entering the home through its tiles for at least 25 years. Tesla also guarantees that the power output of these solar tiles will be at least 95% of the rated peak power after five years and will decline by no more than 0.5% per year for the next 20 years of its warranty period. My father and I like to do everything over the top. And we're like, can we get 150% off the grid? And they're like, no, 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 no. It's not worth the squeeze, right? The, because the power companies will only buy back a limited amount. So we did a video a few weeks ago about your house and you had the Tesla farm there, but this is the real deal right This here. is the big one, yes. This is the big one. We put in four rows and it's a 106 kilowatt system. So we have 360 panels and then they all connect to the tasting room and winery. Having been in operations for over four years, it is nearing the point where it would have paid for itself. So the solar farm, the 106 kilowatts, that was about a $250,000 project, maybe slightly less. That's including the inverters, including all the labor, all the stuff said and done. But at our current rate, we've only got three years left for the savings to have covered that entire cost. Our old power bill just for the building and the winery uh, was around 6,000 to 6,500 every month. And uh, after we got the solar put in, it's down to 1,500 to $2,000 every month. So it's a pretty good chunk of change, like in real savings right yeah. off the bat. It was, a, a, to us, a no-brainer. I, I got a lot of flack from some of the staff members about, oh, it's gonna ruin the beauty of the Yona Mountain and our vineyards are right here. I said, no, I think there's gonna be a strong demographic of people who will appreciate seeing it right next to the grapes. It's perfectly lined up and it's generating all the energy during the day that we need. And so people are drinking solar powered wine. The green is how much solar we are generating in real time. And the red is how much we are burning from the grid. So if the green is above the red, we're 100% off the grid. Okay. So right now we're only burning 38 kilowatts of power which is a lot, and we are generating 77. So this is kind of fun because no one ever gets to see this actual process because it's so rare. This will only last about eight to 15 days. Let me pull this up to the reel. These are what the grapes look like while they are fermenting. So you see all the little tiny bubbles in there? That's the yeast converting sugar into alcohol. And they give off CO2, which are these little tiny bubbles. So right now this wine is sitting on the skins and getting all these flavors. And when this is done, when it stops fermenting, all these skins will drop to the bottom and it'll just look like juice. All that's expensive though. Yeah. We're gonna get our money back. In three years, it's got 26 years it'll pay for it. Three years, those panels will have paid so for it. So how does it work? You come up with the ideas, you pitch it to that, 
That pays for it. And I go along with it. We're, 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 we're uh, together on this. The vineyard also features an electric forklift for a cleaner, quieter operation. And 95% of the property operates off of low power LED lighting. All the lights down here are completely LED. It fit yeah. hand in hand with colored lighting. Right. I want it to look beautiful. We don't want a lot of heat, yeah. right? Because LEDs are a cool burning bulb. And in the back, you'll find 29 beehives, each producing as much as 40 pounds of honey per year. You drink red wine and the lights turn red. Wow. Only a year I'm not ready that happened. It's like multi-sensory. I'm impressed. I am very impressed. She's hard to impress, I can tell. Is she hard to impress? She's hard to impress. She's seen a lot of cool things. That's actually really cool. All right, guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you drop a like and you're subscribed to our channel as that support goes a long way. Also, check out our website. It's kimjava.com for our premium Tesla-inspired merch. And we'll catch you next time. I like this. Yeah, no, it's good. This is my this favorite is really summer good. one. It's called Viognier, and it's spelled oh. funny. People are like, Viognier? It's a vlogger. Right? It's basically the vlogger one. <laughs> of course I'd like it. So we generated 10 megawatts. We used 30 megawatts. So we netted 20. And this is one of the hardest times of the year. The summer is when we use the most power because the air conditioners work the hardest. In the winter, those things almost come right to that 50% mark, sometimes 60. But right now, constantly, all these air conditioners are running, the glycol machines are running, because you can feel it. It's about 65 yeah, degrees in here. Yeah, feels good. Yeah. So with a 106 kilowatt array, they had to break it up into the different inverters, right? Usually you look at, you know, one house, a residential, you just have the one inverter and it does the conversion. So all you can see each one of these comes in with the three phase and these convert it down to the AC power. So each one of these is a 33,000 watt inverter. And then they all combine into the transformer, which then connects to the entire building with usable power, right? Because you gotta have AC instead okay. of DC. Here's what it looks like. So right now we're generating 11.5 solar and we're using 16. It's our new fancy Italian press. EV. Yes, Eno Veneta. <laughs> Look at you, looking for puns everywhere you go. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I'm probably wearing the worst possible thing to come see bees. It's like the biggest flower they've ever seen, their favorite color with flowers on it. I mean, we're bringing out all the toys here today. And the funny thing is, I've never actually held one of these in person. It's pretty cool. It doesn't have any gas in it right now, right?